Hello, are you ready to conceive, carry and deliver a healthy baby? Uh, welcome to my episode 2 of my podcast, Ready to Conceive. I'm your host, Inna Duckworth. I'm a fertility support expert, uh, trained in several therapeutic modalities and um, uh, some other work around natural health care that will, makes me able to do this work. So uh, I would like to talk about why getting ready. So I get this question quite a lot because uh, first of all, people are in different stages of their fertility journey. Some people uh, have just just sort of started thinking about it. The others are on the other end of the spectrum and <clears throat> think they have done everything they can and it's still not happening. Well, especially this question about readiness to conceive is especially kind of uh, sort of interesting, if you like, especially when you have spent your first 20 years of like 15 years in contraception. Uh, not first, I mean, like the first um, active um, years, uh, sexually active years and uh, looking for contraception, contraceptive means. And now you're like, OK, well, well, why doesn't it happen naturally? Well, I would I read a quote yesterday uh, that there are two types of pain. One type of pain is of um, uh, discipline. One is a pain of discipline and the other is a pain of regret. I would like to uh, reframe it into something like um, opportunity of a discipline and opportunity of a re like opportunity of trying, if you like. That's what I would like to say here. And um, so, what are we looking at at the moment in the world? Well, the fertility rates are failing. Uh, ecology, stress, uh, recent uh, epidemic, they are all not very helpful at the moment. The other thing is we have been delaying fertility be uh, because of our personal goals and challenges, and which is totally understandable. I had my children at 35 and 36, and as I always say, I was lucky and I ver I'm very grateful to my clinic tutor in her clinic in herbal medicine who uh, when i had um, a miscarriage i went to her and i was spoke about it she was very supportive and i started taking herbs and you know everything happened so i did not have to go through the uh unhealthy like sort of this unhealthy uh like exploring the unhealthiness so exploring the problem because i some sort of was already in a place of a natural health mindset and I was already in the hub where I was helped. However, not everyone is so fortunate and starts from that position. So um, yeah, so that that is why it is really important to understand. First of all, in readiness to conceive, I think like in everything else, you need to understand where you are, what is happening. Infertility is considered to be like you can go to, for example, NHS service and seek help with infertility if you have been trying for a baby with unprotected intercourse for 12 months. Uh, so uh, where are you, are you in the journey? So it's time to start looking probably into something. And um, there are several factors of, um, like just let me give you a perspective here that time, one of the perspectives is time. Uh, Professor uh, Robert Jansen did a, a like multifactorial research of fertility and in his opinion uh, if you have got zero factors of infertility on both parts male and female the probability is up to three months you should be pregnant if there's one problem uh, then um, the probability arises to the duration the probable duration of getting pregnant uh, is uh, up to two years. If you've got two problems, up to seven years. And if you've got three problems, the number becomes ridiculous and it's like irrelevant, it's 40 years. So because we're talking about both partners or a male factor, if you are uh, in, um, uh, in non-binary um, conception situation or solo pregnancy, However, it is always two, it takes two to tango. A male fertility factor has been 
long undermined and for example like when they say that 40 percent of uh, fertility is un unexplained uh, 30 percent of well this was statistics for men miscarriages but it would be similar to excuse me to general fertility is 40 percent is unexplained and then they say that 47 percent from uh 47 percent is due to female factor it's because they've never tested male factor and um, well a lot of uh, there's a lot of undiagnosed male factor happening around for example uh, a lot of my uh, patients uh, when they come to see me as a couple they have not been offered a sperm test so but just listen if you've got one infertility factor that is two years say you are okay and they say you're fine that's fine um, and the male factor has not been checked that is your two years uh, for like off the charts I have attended a beautiful webinar by one of the fertility experts and she was uh, doing this scheduling by months how many months we actually got between uh, say uh, 20 and 45 and she was showing how every month every month every cycle matters because the clock is actually biological clock is actually ticking now um so if you're both uh, what do i mean by um fertility should uh, the, there are special tests and checks should be done to establish where are you at your fertility journey and uh, quite often when people say oh we've done everything from from natural naturopathic point of view the science naturopathic science has moved so much that when they say oh my doctor checked uh my the, the doctor checked my uh hormones and they did an ultrasound and and they said i'm fine in the naturopathic from the naturopathic point of view well that's just like pre-starting point it's almost pre-screening because we still can and should look for imbalances and uh, um find the that very reason why it is not happening um, um there is obviously a, a space for um for unexplained infertility but if you apply uh sort of, uh, modern techniques and modern understanding of the situation the, the scope of these problems is much much less you would see um like things that are not explained uh, uh from sort of medical standpoint can be explained from naturopathic standpoint for example for many women the only um, manifestation of celiac disease is infertility second most common problem i see uh, is an, an optimal suboptimal thyroid function uh, in for fertility terms tsh or thyroid stimulation hormone should be not higher than 2.5 and the cutoff point for NHS is five, and for uh, American uh, Association of um, Physician has reduced it to three. So the the, the jury is out. But uh, in the fertility community, fertility scientific community, this should be under two point five. So if you are happening to be already have your blood test, do go and check it out. Where where is it uh, in your in your situation? Because the uh, the underactive or uh, the the problem is in the modern world up to ninety five percent of problems with thyroid are of autoimmune nature. So it used to be that we oh you're lacking in iodine and that's why you've got thyroid problem. No, the science moved on, you know, and uh, it's like the 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 more and more understanding around the etiology of the. Re, uh, the root cause of a disease are being explored and same is with uh, thyroid we understand now that it's of autoimmune nature and the one of the um, kind of the nearest uh, point of uh, sort of the the most common autoimmunity linked with thyroiditis is um, gluten sensitivity again now the problem with gluten, I do not want to demonize wheat and um, the problem with gluten is that we have changed wheat genetically so much that the protein that was safe to our um, ancestors 
has now changed into something that's reacting in our body in a certain way. Same is with dairy. We have changed our pattern of dairy consumption into something very different, first of all. And second, we are using uh, prolactin and to stimulate uh, dairy production. And uh, we have changed the way we work with dairy products, i.e. We, um, we started homo homogenizing milk protein. And if uh, prior to all these changes, the milk protein was like a large molecule and it could stay in our gut. So now it is like kind of uh, dissected, if you like, and uh, given the other sensitivities and so-called leaky gut situation, it starts getting into the systemic circulation and causes inflammation there. And, uh, but the sensitivity to dairy and gluten are not the only like uh, sensitivity to uh, milk protein and to wheat protein are not the only aspects of dairy and gluten sensitivities. And for example, they need to be looked at if needed. We're talking about uh, your personal situation. Because in fertility support, unfortunately, there are no, there are group works. You can do a group work to prepare for fertility. And I mind this space or drop me an email if you're interested. I will be running a group program in uh, next, beginning next 2023. And we will be talking about sort of household support and uh, food support and recipes and all of that. But if we're talking about uh, a situation where things are not happening, you need to be uh, well uh, tested and well the we, we need to find the root causes for your situation and um, so i've just touched upon dairy sensitivity and gluten sensitivity uh, the question people ask me do i need to go dairy free and gluten free most likely most likely if you're already in a situation where you have tried and you cannot conceive then yes most likely at least for several uh, months um, uh, while we're working at your uh, situation. Overall, my approach to fertility food is a Mediterranean diet because uh, it's such a like sort of abundant and um, uh, sort of generous uh, kind of feast of food the Mediterranean diet is and uh, we will be talking about it in the next episodes. Uh, mind this space, I've got two experts coming in the next couple of podcasts. One will be talking about pelvic health and the other one will be talking about food and uh, aspects of um, some other aspects of fertility that she's working with. And if you're an expert in the fertility field, please reach out. I'll be happy to invite you and make this podcast really useful for people who are just on their journey and looking for support. Now, that's what I was coming back to the uh, sort of to the approach that I take, which is fertility is a very personalized journey. Everyone is different and everyone's reactions are different. And some people are like, you know, this sort of achievers. They are happy to, yep, just tell me what to do. We're going to do that. And the other people need a bit more uh, support and hand held in on the journey. But there's one thing that is absolutely, absolutely, in my opinion, is paramount in this work, which is your personal priorities. Um, let me touch upon that. And um, how did when I well, how did I come about working in fertility? I all almost for for a decade, I had people around me. I am um, like very, very near in my nearest circle who couldn't conceive. And when I was talking to them and they thought that they've done everything they could, but in my opinion, they hadn't even started, you know, because I knew that there is more to it. So I knew that there's uh, kind of, you can do this and this and this and this and this, but I couldn't offer it all as one kind of umbrella service. And I, and um, I, w I, w I could see that this, there was a lack of guidance around their, and their, around their attempt and there was a lack of, uh, because of this lack of guidance, I don't know what came first actually, that I was going to say about priorities. I didn't feel that most of these people made it their priority and I think that absolutely 
I think that it's an absolute um, kind of making it a priority. Yes, that's what I want to say. Like, uh, it's quite a bit of work that needs to happen for the. Um, if the chances are slim, that the, 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 there's a bit of work to be done, but th there is a possibility. There's always a possibility, and. Um, um, so w w after see having all these uh, people around me and like thinking, well, you could have done this, they could have done this. I decided to learn and be able to offer this service to them. And now I am. And uh, the, this, the approach has changed quite a lot into what is possible, the art of the possible. And the point is you really need the right tools. Uh, where I place my work, for example, and support ready to conceive is before IVF, if you needed assisted reproductive cycle or before the actual, okay, we are having a baby. My work is a little bit prior to that. Uh, well, because first of all, the mature, time of maturation of the follicle and time of maturation of the sperm is three months, three, well, about 100 days and three months. And that means that the period you will be having this month is totally affected by what was going on with you three months ago. So if you were stressed three months ago, expect there are more kind of some challenges around your period uh, because uh, the stress hormones affect our uh, reproductive hormones. They all come together. They are made from the same um, source material in the body. And this is why working in fertility is uh, like a, a, a long process, at least, as I say, the packages that I offer start from 12 to 14 months, but, uh, for 12, for 12 to 14 weeks, because, well, it depends how the, the um, scheduling works, how the period and everything else, but overall it's 12 to 14 weeks, and it's a minimum because we need to get to the point where the egg that the egg needs time to be uh, improved or like optimized the best it can and the sperm needs to get to the best points possible for example with the sperm uh, you know that when the egg and the sperm um, are kind of meet if you like the egg has to improve the DNA quality of the firm of the uh, spermatozoa. So uh, there's some process called DNA fragmentation when the DNA is not quite, you know, like quite in its best shape possible. And the egg has to improve that for this embryo to happen. So the, and uh, it uses its own energy to do that. So the better quality of sperm and the best quality of if the best quality of sperm and the best quality of egg can create an embryo that gives the better chances to for the baby to happen. And it is also very relevant even if you go through a, a process of um, stimulating the follicles and uh, then harvesting them. And it still will work, the preparations that you will do. I uh, will work on improving the quality of that egg and will improve your chances for um, uh, embryo and the implantation. If we're talking about implantation, the key factors around that are um, vaginal microflora. And unfortunately, uh, the sort of the conventional testing doesn't cover the process of, the, the, they don't show you what is exactly going on. So basically, most of the tests are still done on the kind of conventional testing system are mostly done like with someone actually looking through what they've harvested and just saying, oh, I can't see anything or I can't see this or this looks like this. Let's uh, that this is this type of bacteria where the uh, functional medicine tests are do, done through the genetic testing uh, where they show you what um, which genetic material is found and in the um, in the sampling material, and thus you can see what is the whole picture of what is going on in the um, microbiome of uh, vaginal canal. 
It is particularly important to know, for example, everyone probably already knows that lactobacilli should be the predominant species in the canal. However, there are several types of lactobacilli and one type is uh, kind of better than others, but like better than for conception purposes. However, uh, we have got different um, types of community, it's called uh, sort of we have got different types of microbiome and they are, these types of microbiome are predisposed, predisposed kind of genetically and uh, and also uh, women from some parts of the world are more inclined to have this type than the other for example the part of the world where people are not eating dairy routinely they have less lactobacilli they have a community state type that is not based on lactobacilli and it's still okay it's still a healthy uh, state uh, but for conception purposes we might need to do a bit more support um, it depends on the particular situation that the, the person and the couple is in so um, one more thing probably to add today is that uh, growing like Growing to have a baby is a process and um, the real thing, I don't want it to be like daunting for anyone, it is, and I know the pressure and especially in some cultural communities, the social pressure is like, you know, unbearable probably. Um, the, um, uh, I understand it, I totally understand it, but your understanding I think that it is important to kind of arrive at realization that this is part of your personal story. It's like this Japanese um, this Japanese art of repairing the cracks with gold, where every like all of this that is happening is part of your um, yeah part of the story, and. Um, you would value more this is like a growth process that will help you see and value things you didn't notice before and um, treat things differently and reconsider many many things like as i always say stress is one of the predominant factors in well stress pollution and other stuff but because when we talk about stress we exhaust our adrenals and if you look at um, sort of Chinese medicine point of view, which is one of the most kind of well-preserved holistic systems of medicine, which because they had like uninterrupted lineages and they were recording what they were doing, we can trace it quite far back, where other systems we are relying on, which are same uh, sort of, or even may, may be more advanced in their holism, but because we don't have lineages left, the lineage is broke and we don't have the recording of it and sometimes it might feel a bit patchy or a bit like oh how did that happen while in Chinese especially in classic Chinese medicine that hasn't been uh, abridged by the uh, sort of rulers of the country of the 20th century uh, the 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 kind of ancient traditions of which I happen to study. I've studied five element tradition quite in depth and I offer some five element work as well. So um, what the Chinese saying is that the adrenals are the, together with kidneys, are the source of our um, uh, ancestral energy. And so we are using our ancestral energy to uh, build our careers, to you know, thrive and achieve, but we should understand that this comes at a cost. So basically, like in a sense, when we are overdoing it, uh, we are kind of borrowing the energy from the future generations. So for many people, the question of stress is probably the first that comes uh, to fertility. Like the, I'm not just talking about the stress of not being able to conceive, but the level of stress in our life um, that um, you know that was prior to conception I mean I've got couples who are meeting each other 
like once a month for sort of around ovulation time and the rest they have got their busy schedules um that that's um that's probably one of the things to start looking at so what is my life filled with and um again coming back to the topic of priority um how how much is baby a priority for you personally and for your for your partner for your couple for your life story i mean um for some people you'll have to go quite f for some couples and people to get a baby you will have to go quite far and wide uh, to be able to, to do that now the the statistics say you needed a, um assisted reproductive support the statistics is rather green you know the minimum like uh, in different sources they say it takes on average three cycles and uh, the recent statistics is up to eight cycles of unsuccessful IVF before the success happens and the problem with that I've got is um, that it's like repeating IVF, IVF after IVF after IVF without doing the pre-work without stopping and doing like a uh, stop checking where am i what am i doing it's like you are like exhausting yourself exhausting your resources exhausting your physical resources because ivf for especially for women are very very um kind of uh, have good side effects and are very kind of chemical chemical heavy so um like why not to stop and just stock, stock check where are you and when the doctors uh, in the IVF clinic tell you oh we'll do all the tests they will they will do the tests to tell them when to do this cycle and uh, just to uh, like to be able to so the tests they're doing are to harvest the egg to grow the follicles to harvest the eggs and to do the cycle they're not looking at the bigger picture. Unfortunately, very few of AF clinics are looking at the bigger picture. And I am uh, like admiring these people and I'm deeply respectful uh, when people are, when they're actually looking at a wider, wider situation, you know. And um, uh, offering hope to people, you know, to, to offering. Uh, improve the results, improve chances for a healthy baby. Um, yes, so that's what I was going to say as well, that it's also important to um, have all the things put together as a puzzle. And this is what holistic medicine is famous for, is actually putting the puzzle together and uh, seeing where the m most of the work needs to happen. And um, Quite often I have I have situations where people think, oh, we've done everything, we're exhausted, we can't do anymore, but we still don't have the results. And this is where they come to see me. Well, my advice is don't get to the situation. See me a bit earlier when you haven't, rather than, for example, for example, I mean, I know it probably is not a, I don't know, um, like if somebody doesn't like the example, I'm sorry, but say you've had an, 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 a failed IVF cycle. Rather than jumping into another IVF cycle, uh, why don't you give yourself a chance to kind of a break and, uh, for example, come to see me and uh, we will work with your situation for, as I say, 12 to 14 weeks. We'll try, we'll get to the bottom of it. We'll, I'll show you where the problems are and uh, we'll take the actions to improve the situation and then you will go back to your next IVF cycle but you will be so much more prepared to what is coming and you'll be so much more ready physically emotionally and uh, like you you will know that you have done the pre-work that is needed for to give it a better chance of success um yes probably all for tonight for today um I would like to have more questions, please. So do ask your questions. You can e email me on the email under this uh, podcast, in the podcast notes. And uh, I will sort of, it's kind of, I'm still getting the kind of feel for this, how it works. And um, 
uh, as I said, I've got two guests lined up and maybe more. Uh, maybe I hope more guests are coming. And um, I will be talking through case studies with you, how we did that, what happened and where we're going with this to give you a bit more context of what is possible. Well, thank you very much for today. Stay tuned and get ready to conceive.